Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. I invite you to come along with me on this imaging session. And tonight I'm targeting the Fishhead Nebula, also known as IC1795, or the Bear Nebula. Here's some details in Stellarium for my target, the Fishhead Nebula, or IC1795. And I'll zoom in now using the control arrow key. Stellarium does give us a visual of what the nebula looks like. And then the other thing that we can do is we can choose the sensor view, which at the top right of the screen in Stellarium, we have these options for our view. And here you can see I've configured Stellarium with my sensor that's, that corresponds to my ZWO camera, also for my telescope and my focal reducer or lens. So this is a cool feature because now we can see that within a single imaging session, we should be able to capture a pretty good view of the fish head nebula. So you might also be familiar with the heart nebula. And that's kind of what led me to try to image the fish head nebula. I was trying to image the heart nebula and, you know, still learning about astrophotography and came to the realization that the heart nebula is really large and you'd have to take a mosaic really to to be able to construct an image of the heart nebula. So for that reason I focused in on the fish head nebula and it's a little smaller target thinking that I could get maybe a decent image of the fish head nebula in one imaging session. And here in SharpCap I'll do a plate solve and resync to make sure that the target is centered up in our field of view. And so here we can see that uh, there was an offset adjustment of 0 0.03 degrees. Here in PHD2 guiding, I've connected my equipment and now I'm just I'm auto selecting a star. I do have multi star guiding enabled and just starting off the guiding to see how it's going to do. And I'll advance this forward so we can see after a little bit more time the, the trend we're seeing on the graph for the guiding. And this is, seems to be fairly consistent for what I see. In this imaging session, I'm using my Skywatcher 100 ED APO doublet refractor. And I'm also using my Ioptron Gem 28 mount, as well as sharp cap and PHD2 guiding. For processing the images, I'm using AstroPixel processor, Serial, and GIMP. In sharp cap, I'm using the smart histogram to do a measurement and I'm aiming for unity gain so it'll take some exposures and then it'll analyze those results and recommend the optimal settings for exposure, gain, black level, things like that and then you can apply those settings. I don't have a cooled camera so even though this is given the range of max exposure of five minutes, I will be using calibration frames to deal with the hot spot that's typical on this model of camera if I do a very long exposure. So we can see that the recommendation is nearly five minutes, 298 seconds, with an optimal gain of 202. So I'm going to apply that for my imaging session. The Fishhead Nebula is located in the constellation of Cassiopeia in the Northern Hemisphere. So here back in SharpCap, I'm going to start a capture and I'm going to go for three hours. The Fishhead Nebula is part of a large star forming region of dust and gas in the Perseus spiral arm of our Milky Way galaxy. So here it's about an hour into the imaging session and I'm checking in to see if everything is still on track. Here's what the guiding is looking like and we can see that we have another couple hours left. Everything's looking normal here. Just doing a second check-in here. It's about 2 hours and 15 minutes into the imaging session and things are still looking as they were before. So once this finishes capturing the light frames, we'll move on to darks. The approximate distance from Earth to the Fishhead Nebula is about 6,000 light years. So I'll kick off capturing some darks and I'll go with 20. And this looks like this will take us to about um, 4.36, so an hour and 40 minutes or so. And we'll check back in then. The brightest region of the Fishhead Nebula is known as NGC 896. It hosts a lot of young, massive stars 
and these stars are producing a lot of ultraviolet light. This UV radiation excites the gases in the surrounding area and makes it shine. Okay, so now it's time to capture some flat frames, and I'll change the exposure down to a very short duration, one second. Sometimes you have to adjust the gain as well, but to get the histogram to look right for flats. Okay, so I'm going to go with 200 flat frames. So this will finish in a few minutes. From what I'm reading, it's very common when imaging the fish head nebula in astrophotography to use the Hubble color palette, which assigns the um, narrowband emissions of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen atoms to the colors red, green, and blue. So right now, I don't have that set up, you know, I don't have that equipment. I have just the color camera. I also don't have a cooled camera. So I'm hoping someday when I have a monochrome cooled camera and I'll you know get an appropriate filter wheel set up with the right filters that I can try to do one of these false color imaging sessions because these images really bring out you know the details in the fish head nebula. So now that we have all our data captured, we'll go into Astro Pixel Processor and select all of our light frames, our flat frames, dark frames, and bias frames. And then we'll kick off the Analyze, which includes um, Calibrate as well. So it'll calibrate and analyze all the data we've captured to rank it by quality, etc. So now that the Calibrate and Analyze is completed, you can take a look at the outcome. It creates a graph. It also lets you look at these, this information below in this list. So you can see the quality of the frames that we captured. The next thing to do would be just to go ahead and kick off the Integrate process. And once we navigate to the Integrate tab, there's some options here that I want to pay attention to, like the filter. So I'm going to use Adaptive Rejection, which is really ideal if you have more than 20 frames. It's one of the more sophisticated rejection um, options. And then you can see, as I scroll down, some of the other options that I've chosen for the integration. So I'll kick off the integrate process and we'll let Astro Pixel Processor do its work to complete the stacking. And as it wraps up, here we see our stacked image from Astro Pixel Processor. I'm going to save this image as both a FITS and a TIFF file. I'll change the default name to SAN so it's a little more recognizable by me and a few of the options there with the format of the file. And then I'll continue doing some post-processing in serial. So here in GIMP, taking a look at the histogram view, you can still see that the calibration frames addressed most of that hotspot, but there's still a little bit there on the right side. So I'm going to crop this to get rid of any artifacts on the edge and also get rid of that um, hotspot artifact that's on the right hand side. And then I'll save that um, with an appropriate name. I'm also going to use the color calibration option to neutralize the background. So I'm going to select a region of the screen in the background and then I'll click on this use current selection option up towards the right of this dialog window and then click on um, background neutralization to apply that. As I go along I find it helpful to save the image again with something in the file name that indicates you know what's been done so far. It gives you the ability to go back even though you can use the undo buttons this gives you the ability to go back if you've done too much stuff and it's hard to undo. I'm also going to use the background extraction option and in this dialog that comes up we have a few options that control like how many samples per line and the grid tolerance for the placement of the samples where which helps us to avoid placing samples on top of like the nebula. Of course we can remove them by right clicking. So normally you have to go through this a couple times and experiment, adjust the settings to see um, what works the best for the particular image and the data you've captured. And again I'm going to save this after this step with an appropriate name. I want to use StarNet's star removal option. So I'm going to save this as a 16-bit TIFF and then open that file. And here are the menu options. So I'm going to choose a pre-stretch linear image option and execute. And it'll take this a uh, little bit to complete. 
So here's the image with the stars removed, and I'll save this with starless in the name. Now I'm going to use the pixel math option of Cyril to subtract the starless data from the full image so that I can end up with the stars only version. So after applying this simple formula, we get the result with the stars only, and we'll save that to a file. Going back to the portion of the data that just has the nebula and not the stars, I'm going to use the histogram to stretch the data some. And once this is applied, I'm also going to adjust the saturation and increase that and having background factor set to high. And adjust the black and white point. And then I'm going to save this and include, you know, the word stretch in the name of the file so I can recognize at what stage I'm at with this file. Now for the file with just the stars, I'm going to increase the stretch a little bit with the ASIN transformation. And I'll also save this with stretch in the name of the file. And now I'm going to use the pixel math option to take the two stretch files. I'll give them a variable name and then use the formula to add them back together. And here's the combined image. Now just making some minor adjustments to black and white point. And then I'll save the file and I'll put serial final in the name. I always like to open that file that was saved outside of the application and just look at the image directly. And here's a quick look at the full screen of that image after post-processing with Cyril. I think this is looking pretty good so far. So here in GIMP, I'm going to apply some changes to the brightness and contrast as well as to the exposure and the saturation. Now with the post-process in applied in GIMP, I'll save this out as a TIFF file and a FITS file and then take a quick look at that file. And here it is after post-processing in GIMP. I think this turned out pretty good. We hope you enjoyed this imaging session. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, ways you found to effectively image this target and have a good outcome, please leave those comments for anyone else watching this. And I think my observation would be, um, you know, definitely you, you can stretch a camera like I have maybe to capture an image of a target like this, but probably having a monochrome camera, a filter wheel and the right filters would be able to bring, in a, bring out a lot more details for this target because just looking at you know those Hubble color palette images I've seen online looks like other people have been able to bring out a lot of detail for this target. I also think that it needs to be a mosaic even though I can fit a large part of this target in my uh, sensor, my field of view. I think looking at other images people are capturing like a broader um, image of the fish head nebula it goes out quite a bit farther. So I think what I would do also in the future is I would uh, use EQ Mosaic or some other software to plan um, a mosaic capture and then you know stitch all those images together to produce a nicer overall look at the fish head nebula. If you enjoy these kind of videos I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Wishing you clear skies.